Welcome back to Chat Chit. This time we're talking about Essendon. It's a review, it's a preview of the next season. Um, and yeah, so we're talk- thinking of Essendon last year. It was a very disappointing season because they started so strong. They were in around, what, fifth and sixth for until midway through the season and then just had this heavy, heavy drop off. And the question for me with Essendon is why is it that they continue to drop off in the second half of the season and just generally not perform how they should? Now, a lot of people have Essendon ladder-wise dropping off a lot this year uh, just because there always seems to be a lot of teams on the rise or showing a lot of promise and people don't see that with Essendon. But when I look at Essendon, I see a team that is relatively strong, should be relatively strong all over. They've got a talented backline, Ridley, Redmond, McGrath, guys like that down there. They have uh, stars in the midfield with Parrish and Merritt who have done it for uh, for a few years now. And then guys like Setterfield and Nick Martin who are really exciting coming through. And then they have stars uh, in the forward line. Peter Wright and Jake Stringer are both guys who can really take a game away from you. But they just can't seem to put it together, can they? Well, they're a team that sat in the finals for a huge majority of the 2023 season. I mean, just looking at the last 10 games, they lost seven of them. And they were they were only a game and a half outside the top eight. So a pretty disappointing end to the season for them. They would, probably would have expected, especially I think they were fifth after round 17. And they just lost and lost and lost and lost and lost. And just couldn't, get, couldn't win the games in the clutch. Um, a team, I don't think, I wouldn't say stacked with talent. But they've got they've got enough players that that should should have been pushing towards finals. Now I've also got them dropping well below where they were last last year in sixteenth, um, sort of just sitting above the obvious two teams in North and West Coast. But they were they were very active in the trade period. They got Todd Goldstein, Ben Mackay, Jade Gresham, um, Xavier Dersma. Uh, they've got a huge um, cap space, and they've obviously used that in Ben McKay and Jade Gresham. They've obviously seen that they needed to, to really strengthen up the squad. It looks like they've gone for more experience. Yeah, and I think Ben McKay and Jade Gresham are both underrated players. I think a, a huge problem for them is is in their midfield. I know they've got talent in, in Paris, who you're not the biggest fan of. They've got... Merritt, who's an awesome player, but I th- I think they're lacking a guy who can really get in and, and win the ball, because I don't think Merritt's one of those guys. I don't think Parrish is one of those guys. A guy that can really win the contest of possession, get it out to the runners like Merritt, get it out to the guys like Nick Martin, and get it forward so so Peter Wright can impact, Carl Langford can impact. I don't that, that is, that's how I see Essendon. And at the end of 2022, there was a huge amount of criticism for Essendon's midfield in terms of. Running, they're saying that they're downhill skiers. They run forward, but they don't run back. And Zach Merritt took responsibility and he said, we're going to work our ass off in the offseason and make sure that we are one of the most reliable and strong teams when it comes to running both ways in the midfield and helping out our defense. But we saw at times last year that still didn't happen. And you start to wonder, is it a like a system issue or is it a personnel issue where they've got guys who in the midfield who like to get their hands on the ball but not guys who are focused on sticking to a man or heading back and helping the defense and I think that's something they got to find this year now I know you're a big fan of Brandon Zach Thatcher a guy you think's definitely one for the future I think he's a guy that's got a lot of potential but have they replaced him well in Ben McKay I think they have I think Ben McKay is a guy who maybe hasn't been able to shine his brightest being really exposed in a in an inexperienced North defense. But now he'll be alongside some experienced, talented players. Not that there aren't, there aren't talented players at North, but more experienced players. And I think he'll be able to shine because he's a very, very strong intercept marker, a really good aerial aerial threat. Um, so and uh, I think he'll be solid. Do you think they've improved this trade period? I definitely think they've improved this trade period. So where where do you have them finishing? Where do you have them finishing this year, twenty twenty four? I'm finishing thirteenth, which I'm saying all these positive things about them, but I guess I'm saying that relative a, to a, a, what yeah, a lot of other people are saying. I guess because it's a bit of an interest. Like they've improved, but they're going backwards in the ladder. Yeah. Um. I don't know. They're just for me as well. I'm in sixteenth. They got pick nine, pick thirty one, but I don't know. I just don't have a lot of faith that they're going to get it done this year. Yeah, that's fair enough. 
Um, but yeah, that's all we have time for today, and we'll see you all in the next one.